Hey guys, it's Danny. Today I'm taking you along for a special unboxing. In this box, I have some dead or alive orchids, jewel orchids to be more exact, which I've wanted for a very, very long time. I've tried last year to purchase some jewel orchids. It didn't work out so well because they were packed wet. They got mushy. Long story short, I was on the lookout for a jewel orchid source and let me tell you, it's not easy to find them if you want fast shipping. And of course, I did not find fast shipping anywhere, so what I had to do is order from Orchids NL. Not Orchids with an S, but with a Z. I don't know if they're the same as the username Orchids NL. They appear not to be. So that's the only source that I could find right now, which may or may not deliver to me in a timely fashion. Uh, but I have to say it kind of took two weeks with expedited shipping through the post office. I really don't know how these guys fared. That's why I wanted to take you guys along for extra courage. And if all goes well, I will show you my current jewel orchids because I do have a few, show you how they're doing, little update, you know the drill, maybe a sneak peek at a project I'm working on, who knows? Anything is possible. So with that said, if we all end up enjoying this video, do give this video a like, it really helps it out. And why not subscribe? I post three times a week. So with that said, let's not delay any longer and see what we're dealing with. Hopefully nothing bad because these guys are potted in moss. So if you pack them super wet, it's not gonna end well. So as I unpack them, let me tell you about the experience with this store. They're actually a store and they have a website. Let's just say could have been a little better. I messaged them for the first time in January or December asking them if they can actually ship through courier at my expense. I didn't get any answer. I wrote to them on eBay and on their website. So twice, no, twice on eBay, one time on their website and got no reply, nothing, silence. They didn't acknowledge me. And at some point I decided to just take a little chance for three orchids because there's really no other place I can find at the moment, at least up until now, where I can <laughs> find some jewel orchids. And what do you know? When I placed my order, they emailed me thanking me for my order but not acknowledging the other emails. So yeah, take that as you will. That has been my experience with them. It doesn't mean their nursery is bad. It just means that's my experience and you know, I would have liked for them to reply to me, but oh, they're wet. Oh no. Oh no, look at that. Okay. So yeah, communication with the seller inexistent. And then, please be alive. Anything, a little stem, a little any. Oh, maybe it's alive, you guys. Please, please, please. It's okay and it's alive and it's gonna be absolutely okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is it weird that I got a little bit of a heart rate going on now? Well, I always have a heart rate, but now it's, I think it went to 80. Let's see. Oh my goodness, 83. Do you guys even see this? <laughs> it went to 83. I normally have 60 something. <laughs> I really want these orchids to be alive, no joke. So first off, we have a Anectochilus or Anectochilus siamensis crossed with Dulcinea marmorata. So this is the hybrid. Um, I'm so happy it's alive, but it's not the most coveted one that I have <laughs> in this order. So one down, two more to go. These ones don't look so bad. I mean, you can see the majority of mold was right here. So that's a good sign. These ones don't seem so wet. Again, good sign. Oh my goodness. Let's see. Oh. Okay, looks okay. <laughs> Holy moly. Okay, we have a little bit of damage, but it's okay. So this is Makota Sandariana. This is the one I was really, really looking for. I really wanted to have this one and it looks okay. One thing I learned is to check their root system, which we will do. Maybe we're just gonna pot them 
really, really fast into something, at least for now, because it happened to me twice already. I had the Sandariana in the past briefly. It had a lot of algae on the top of the sphagnum moss and that pinched the stem. Yes, it wasn't stem rot. It wasn't because it rotted on the way, it was the algae. And you know how I know that? Because it happened to me in my care. So this algae formation here, which could very well be cyanobacteria at this point is no good. I need to get rid of it right now. But oh my goodness, it's alive. Yeah, this leaf does not look the greatest. It has a little damage, but it's nothing. <sighs> Thank goodness. Oh, and the last one has a little bit of mold here as well. Let's hope it's nothing serious. Oh, okay, it looks okay. <laughs> Thank goodness, but I think you can see how super wet they are. Okay, this is an Ectochylus siamensis crossed with Macotus patola. Now, there are a whole bunch of jewel orchids, I have to say. If you Google them, you will see there are a lot of varieties, a lot of species, don't imagine a hundred, but quite a few that you can acquire. It's just very hard to come by here in Europe for whatever reason, but you know what? These guys are okay and they're looking good i'm so incredibly happy <laughs> yay so what i will do next is get rid of this sphagnum moss and just go ahead and pot them at least for the time being in something else and that something else will be cocoa peat so let me go grab my stuff So I removed the sphagnum moss as much as possible. These guys have very fluffy roots, so I'm not gonna go ahead and pick all the strands of moss. It's impossible, they're very attached. This is enough. So I'm gonna use these little plastic pots and my mixture of cocoa peat and bark chips. This is the cocoa peat IKEA cells and the bark is the Zoomed that I always use. And these orchids work in this mixture because they are terrestrial. They absolutely work in sphagnum moss as well because it's very, very wet. It's also pretty dense. It doesn't hold big air pockets, which these guys really don't like. But sphagnum moss, at least here in my climate, is very, very prone to algae or cyanobacteria, one of the two. It's a type of algae or cyanobacteria that produces toxins, I believe, and it affects the roots, stems, and everything it comes in contact with. So I have to make sure moss is always covered by something. And really, honestly, I would much rather work with cocoa peat for terrestrials than moss, which is much, much better suited for epiphytes in a combination with bark, of course. All right, so from one blab to another, as I say, the orchid has been potted. I made sure to maintain the level. I potted all of the roots. These roots dry out in the air. So this has been the Makotis sandariana. I sure hope she does well. I will give it a good watering after I'm done with all of these. And let's move on to the next ones. All right, so all of my little jewels are potted. I also gave them a good watering. These orchids really, really, really hate to be dry. And here is my older Makotis patola. Well, half of it or a part of it. As you can see, there's a little hole right here because I actually took a cutting and I placed it in a different setup, which I'm gonna show you. But yeah, look at her. She grew so big. Considering these orchids grow so, so very slow, it's an achievement. <laughs> so this orchid, when I received it, was just a little cutting, and now it's a very, very bushy plant. I do have the Ludicia discolor, both the Alba and the other form as well. We just saw them in bloom last month. And also I have the Argentea as well, which you guys didn't see in a long time. And the problem is it got attacked by thrips a lot. All of these orchids, they are very prone to having pest issues because they have velvety leaves. I can imagine they're really easy to munch on. So currently I do keep them separated from the vast majority of my collection. This one is sitting in a Detolf shelf and the other ones are sitting in a mini terrarium. Let me show it to you. Ta-da, look at that. It is a work in progress. I set it up about three weeks ago and it's going beautifully. 
uh, but the video on this will probably be published in a month or two. I need to let it run a little bit, make sure everything is going great. If you remember last time I had some issues with some yellow fungi that pretty much attacked everything, spoiled everything, and yeah, I don't want that to happen again. I need to make sure that whatever caused that is eliminated, and I do believe it was the bark as I was saying. So now I used fresh materials, the same cocoa peat actually, because I'm pretty sure the cocoa peat was okay. And yeah, everything is going great now, but let me just show you the Argentea in the back. There she is, she is recovering so well. Out of all of these orchids, I have to say the Argentea responded to the higher humidity the best. Other than that, I will have to say that jewel orchids, as much as, yeah, they are high humidity plants, they will perform great. They will not be prone to all sorts of rots and things, let's say Phalaenopsis maybe, or a Cattleya will be prone to. You can absolutely grow them in lower humidity as well. As you can see, my other jewel orchid, the Makotas, looked absolutely fine and she's not growing in high humidity. And these guys are looking absolutely glorious and they are growing in high humidity. So really the choice is up to you. For some people, high humidity enclosures are not ideal because they are prone to molds. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit more about that and a few tips on how to avoid these molds when we're gonna talk about this setup. But yeah, as you can see, things look great. This is a Makotas Patola as well, but apparently it's the gold variety. To me, it looks like a totally different orchid, doesn't it? I don't know if it's a gold variety, but that's how they sell it. That in the back is the Argentea, and this is the regular Makotas Patola. Anyway, I'm gonna tell you more about it when we make a video on it. So yeah, stay tuned for a dedicated video on this terrarium. I will explain everything, the plants that I used and how I put it together, what I do and what I don't do in my terrariums, all of that then. But this is what I'm thinking for the new jewels as well. Maybe a little bit bigger than this, obviously, because it just looks so, so pretty. I really love it. And I have a lot of moss right now to work with. It would be a shame to just let it go to waste in a Tupperware, right? <laughs> so yeah, stay tuned for more projects like this. And this is where my other Makotas currently resides. This is my D12 shelf, but this is a new addition. I purchased it just to place here some orchids that I want to protect from spider mites and thrips and all of those things. Not necessarily slipper orchids, but for now it has become a place for slipper orchids as well. But I have another detail for which I will make sure to set up together with you and, you know, tell you about the product and things of the sorts. But up until like a month ago, this orchid has grown for about a year and a half or two in the grow room with the humidity that I had here and it was perfectly fine. So I don't believe you need very, very high humidity. This D12 shelf is not very high humidity either. Let me try to focus. Do you see? It's not sealed. I can almost place a finger inside through the cracks or <laughs> that sounded bad. No, the glass is okay, it's not cracked but you can see the space between the glass. Yeah, it's just not enough to keep in humidity. So I didn't buy this for humidity. I just purchased it to protect the plants inside. Reason why I placed the new jewels here, but I do believe you can actually keep jewel orchids even if you don't have high humidity, as long as you maintain them properly hydrated. They really, really, really hate drying out. But also if you like the idea of higher humidity enclosures like mini terrariums, I believe jewel orchids will handle everything just fine. I don't think they're so prone to rotting situations like a Phalaenopsis, um, Oncidium and other things are. They're just not the same. They're not epiphytes, they have very different structures. You can even see the leaf, yeah, minus the beautiful pattern. You can see it does not have a very thick cuticle. It's velvety and I do believe it absorbed. I left some drops on some jewels and they disappeared a little faster than I expected. So I don't think you should have a lot of issues with high humidity and these orchids. I do believe that some environments are prone to some mold issues, but I'm gonna try to talk to you more about how to try and prevent mold situations or deal with them if you ever encounter them. To some degree, mold is pretty normal. All environments have some type of mold spores. It depends how you manage to stay on top. But yeah, we're gonna talk more about that 
in the video with the mini terrarium. For today though, thank you so, so much for joining me. I was so nervous about these guys. I think they will be okay though. And yeah, they don't look the greatest, but I'm sure they will be fine. I'm gonna make them look like this one. <laughs> Don't worry. But that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Subscribe to my channel for more orchid videos, tutorials, experiments, updates and other fun orchid subjects. If you wish to support the channel, do consider becoming a member or visit the merch store linked down below in the description. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook. It's always nice to stay in touch there as well. And I'll see you next time. Bye!